In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we're looking at Luke chapter 20, verses 20 to 26. So they watched him and sent spies who pretended to be righteous, that they might seize on his words, in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Then they asked him, saying, Teacher, we know that you say and teach rightly, and you do not show personal favoritism, but teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But he perceived their craftiness and said to them, Why do you test me? Show me a denarius. Whose image and inscription does it have? They answered and said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. But they could not catch him in his words in the presence of the people, and they marveled at his answer and kept silent. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. In this passage, we see the Pharisees sending spies uh, to go and check on Jesus and to try to catch him in his words. And um, it's interesting because these are the words of God. And sometimes what ends up happening when our hearts are dark and our hearts are not filled with love, Sometimes we can use the words of God in order to catch other people, to argue with other people, to bring other people down and ultimately to judge them and to pronounce a label upon them based on the word of God. And this is, this is a real perversion of what um, the scripture was made for. The, the, the scripture was never made for us to make barriers between each other, to point fingers at each other, and to point out each other's mistakes. But rather, Scripture and the Word of God was there to bring us closer into union with one another, to bring us to a place where we can build one another and lift each other up. Here the spies are are trying to, to catch Jesus in His words. They're not interested in approaching Christ with love in their hearts. They're not trying to learn from the Son of God. They're not trying to be saved or forgiven or even healed. And so what ends up happening is they approach him with, uh, 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 it says here that he perceived their craftiness. And and that word craftiness really is what I want to kind of uh, uh, you spend some time on today because craftiness is something that's often encouraged in our culture. They approach him with uh, craftiness. They, they approach him with a duality. They approach him with their ego, presenting themselves as righteous, but really inwardly they want to catch him. And sometimes this, this craftiness is something that, that we actually rely on in our everyday life. Sometimes we approach our brothers and our sisters uh, appearing to be righteous, appearing to be good and kind and loving. But in, in our hearts, we're just kind of trying to figure out how we can either you know, benefit from this conversation or, or get something out of it or really end it because we need to go and do something else. And... Uh, and uh, you know, this, this, this craftiness, this duality, this uh, problem-solving side of humans, this side that wants to get something out but not out of another, but not in a straightforward manner. And the Lord, who is singular and simple, sees and perceives their craftiness. Um, one of the, the monks, uh, his name is Hiram Monk Damascene, and he wrote this beautiful book called uh, Christ the Eternal Tao. And in his explanation in, in Chinese philosophy about the ego, uh, he describes the ego as the great problem solver, uh, you know, having the quality of being crafty, you know, uh, being dual. And, and the reason why the ego does that is, is the ego constantly wants to feel like God. And so it uses duality, it uses questions and problem solving and, uh, you know, trying to come up with an answer and come up with a solution and tricks in order to catch people and 
elevate the self. See, these spies could have approached Jesus today and asked about the very same things they're asking and learn. They could have learned from him. They could have received life, but instead they were trying to uh, put forth death. They wanted to catch him and deliver him to the governor. Now the Lord being simple and singular and, and clear and aware and watchful catches them and, and, and recognize, re recognizes their intention. And so with wisdom, he tells them, bring me a denarius. And he says, and he, he says again, giving them an opportunity to learn. He says, whose image and inscription is on this coin? And they answered Caesar's. And he, 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 he said his famous, render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God. And in his answer, we see that he doesn't just give an answer that, that um, you know, he doesn't give an answer that, 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 that remains at the level of the question, but rather he elevates. He elevates uh, the listener and points them back to God. He doesn't say just render to the Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but rather he, he elevates it and points us back to the Father. And, and, the, and his answer is incredibly simple. There is no craftiness in his response, but rather it's straightforward. Whatever bears the image, then it belongs to the, the one whose image is inscribed on it. And this also is spoken of us. We must look at each other and see whose image and inscription is written in the face of my brother and my sister. Therefore, I must render my brother and my sister to God. And the things, uh, you know, of, of the world return it to the world. The things that man has created to elevate himself have no interest to us who are followers of the way, but rather let us render to God the things that are God's. Now, now what in this statement is hidden? Well, think about it. What is God's? The earth and all its fullness. Therefore, our work is not just, you know, to deal with the craftiness of a question about taxes, whether we should pay our taxes or not. Sure. Pay your taxes, give away the money, it's not yours anyways. But rather let us today render the things of God back to God. My brother, my sister, all of creation, look around you and you'll see the fingerprint of God, the inscription of his love for us in everything that is created. Therefore render to God the things that are God's. So today, May we be aware of the craftiness of the ego. May we shed that duality and be simple and single-minded. May we approach the Word of God not as a textbook, not as something that we can use to elevate our own religious egos so we can win in arguments, answer questions in Sunday school, and lift ourselves up, but rather let us approach the Word of God with simplicity, singularity of mind, with a desire to learn. And finally, may we today render to God the things that are God's. Have a beautiful day.